Welcome everyone to today's webinar about our media and public asset library within your CRM. So today we're going to talk about how do you share, store, and organize your files within your account to allow you to use the files throughout the account as well as send documents, track videos, and create your own public asset library, uh, which really helps with that lead generation. So what we're going to be covering today is just the benefits of the media library. We're going to upload and organize our files within the media library. Then we can create and track different documents. We'll upload, share, and track videos. We'll build out your public asset library within your account. And I'll show you a good use case and benefits of why you want to create a public asset library. So my name is Madison Potter. I am on the marketing and implementation team over here at Greenrope, and I'm excited to get started. So this is a really simple quote. It's just a place for everything and everything in its place. I think it's really important to have an organized area of where you store your documents, your files, your emails, and just have everything organized. So when you do need it, you know exactly where to go and what to plug into a specific place within your content that you're sharing. So first of all, within your media library, you can upload a lot of different types of files. So these types of files include images, which are JPEGs, PNGs, or GIF files. You can include regular files such as PDFs, HTML versions, documents, um, Excel, or CSV. We're going to have documents that you can send out for client signature and review. We can create articles as well, which are help you with collecting your knowledge base or adding any types of content that you want to easily plug in throughout the account. Then with the videos, you can use your YouTube or Vimeo IDs and a few other types of files that we'll go through later on in this webinar. So with your media file, you really want to help to organize and customize your files. So within your account, you use folders and groups as the main level of organization for these files. Each file does have a direct link to it, especially if it's made public, and you can cu customize this link, uh, especially if you're using it in your email content and want to have it more on brand. So for your PDFs, uh, if it's made public, you can have a public download link, which is tracked and you can see the visitors who click and uh, use this link. You can set up password protection for any file downloads. You can activate workflows when these documents are downloaded, and then you can track the number of views and downloads for each PDF within your account. So some benefits of using the media library is you have access to these documents or files throughout your entire account. You can customize and limit the file visibility between different um, shared access users or different groups in your account. And then you can also enable password protection if you want to keep some of the files more private. Each file has a direct link to it, so you can share this with your team through emails or with your website or landing pages. The links in your uh, media library are also tracked if you use them throughout your emails. And that way you can use the journeys or the link library to add segmentation and automation uh, when people click on your link. Within the media library, there's an advanced filtering, which really helps you to search for the specific file or type that you're looking for. And then we will use these uploaded PDFs and create a public asset library. So this allows your visitors to come to your website and they can preview your PDFs as well as download it on their end. And you can use this as a lead, strate lead generation strategy and you can request the contact information, such as the email address, for them to get the full version of your PDF downloaded. So let's dive into Greenope and explore all the different options that the media library has. So within your Greenope account, if you hover over the media library option along the right, this is uh, where we're going to be focusing a lot of our time today. Everything that we create, upload, and store can all be accessed within the view of the main media library. Documents are also created in that area, and then once they're sent to contacts, you can track them within the document section. And then you'll use the PDFs that are uploaded into your media library to create your own public asset library. 
So to start, let's go into the main media library. On this page, there are a few key areas to look for. So the media storage is here along the bottom left. You can see how much space you have available for your account. If you feel like you are running out of space, it's good to kind of go through and remove any duplicate content or content that you're really not using. Otherwise, reach out to our team and we can uh, get you some more media storage allocated towards your account. Here we also have a shared option which shows you our list of different cheat sheets that you can use and download. So these dive into all different options within your account, such as group setup, marketing automation, project manager. And so you can click into any of these options and uh, download these PDFs for your view. Then along the top left here, we have our filtering area. So here you can quickly search for any files within your entire media library to quickly pull up whatever you're looking for. Otherwise, if you do click on this little um, drop down arrow, you can get into the description of what may be in the description of your um, media file. And then you can select by type of size, when it was uploaded, um, the ID associated with this media library, as well as any types of downloads or uh, other options here. So you can quickly filter and search for your media files through this section. So to get started, what you want to do is you either want to select a folder that you're working with or click here to create a new folder. So once you click into a folder, you'll now see that um, you have your files that are associated with this folder. And if you want to update the folder name, just click on the pencil mark icon here and that will allow you to edit the folder, na folder name or delete it as well from your account. So to upload new files, click on this blue upload uh, new file button here. And then from here, what you'll do is you'll drag any options from your desktop and drag them into your account. So the types of files you can include are PDFs, HTML documents, CSV files, PNGs, a lot of different options. And then once you have selected the files here, you can either size it for your web, you can um, give group members access as well. If you are doing an interactive group on your website, otherwise you can also make it public here, which allows you to have that download link. So when we are building out our public asset library, you wanna make your files public so we can show them on your website. Then you can either share it with this group specifically all, or all groups in your account. And then if these files are associated with an event, you can select that event here to connect them. Once you're ready, upload your files. So once your files are uploaded, you'll see them here added into the specific folder. From here, you can either use the search bar here to find the file that you're working on. Otherwise, what you could do is you can adjust the description uh, when the files were created or even the category of files that they might fall into. Here you can either then select the files to see a preview along the right uh, or you can select all to kind of bring up all the files within your asset library. This is great if you want to kind of organize your files you'll see them here and you can remove any options. Then you can create a duplicate of these files you can edit the files, remove them from your account, or add them into another folder within your media library. So once you click on the move option, you'll see the, the files you wanna move, and then select the new folder and where you want to store them. Or you can create a new folder from here. So each file will show a preview along the right if it's available. You'll also have a direct link to every file within your media library. From here, you can click to edit the file or the image, and you can create a custom link URL if you're wanting to um, have that for your account. Here, you can find the custom URL for your image. Otherwise, you have a direct URL here as well. If you want to replace this image without creating a new duplicate, you select replace the image and then select a file from your desktop. And you can also adjust the type of access permissions. From here, you can modify this image further. 
which will pull up the actual dimensions of your image. In this example, it's pretty big. You'll see it's 1350 by 1350. We can adjust that to be a little smaller and we can resize this image. You can also rotate it, add text to the image, add another media file on top of this image. You can crop or draw or add any effects to your specific image. From here, you can either save it as a new image or just save it over the existing image from your media library. Next, what you can do if you do have a PDF or um, a document here, you'll see if there's a preview, it'll show along the right. Uh, they also do have a direct link to these options. So if you click on that, you'll see the actual uh, preview of your file. Otherwise, it will be uh, also have a public download link, which is tracked. So if you don't see that public download link, click on the edit option and you'll want to make sure that it's set to public, which will give you that public download link. From here, you can adjust the description as well as add a password protection if you want to um, prevent unwanted downloads. You can create your own custom URL as well as activate a specific workflow when a client clicks on this PDF to be downloaded. You can replace the file here as well as adjust the options. Next, let's dive into update uploading a video within your account. So to do that, click on the video option along the top right. Here we have two types of videos that you can upload based on YouTube or Vimeo. So note that these videos are based on the ID, not the actual link. So if you click on the YouTube ID, then you can add the ID of the YouTube video. So this is everything that comes off to the YouTube um, domain. So it's usually off to the slash option. And then you'll add a description for your video here. Then you can define the types of access permissions. So you can make it public or share it across all groups and then save this video into your account. You'll see now here is our new video and it has that um, preview along the right where you can click and view the actual video. Next, what you would want to do within the video option, you can also use the Vimeo ID, which is everything off to that vimeo.com slash. And you'll see the preview along the left and then you can add your description um, for your video. And save it into your account. So now you'll see here, if you click on the option, uh, you can now embed this video into your account. So what's great about using Vimeo, so let's say you select your video along the left within your folder. Here you can then click to edit the video and you can scroll down to see all the Vimeo tracking that's included. So you can have a workflow trigger, you can add contacts into a group, and then you can select the viewing time and how long the contacts watched your particular video for. And then you can also allow it to be in full screen as well through here. So there are a lot of different options that you can do with your Vimeo videos that you upload into your accounts. Next, let's go into articles. So here you can create your articles within your account. So articles are a great way to kind of store different types of knowledge that you want to have your internal team use, or if you want to easily plug this into your email templates. So here you define your article, you can define the types of access you want as well as the group. Then you would add your article content along the left here. With this article content, you can um, connect it to your wiki account, connect it to different articles, upload images. So kind of create these articles within your accounts. Also within here, we can create a new document. So you can either create a new document right clicking on this button. Otherwise in my documents folder here, I have a test document we can look into. So once you click on your document, you'll see the preview along the right and you can click to edit this document. So here you'll define your document description or the name of your document and update uh, the group or permissions you wanna have for this document. 
Then within the document builder along the left, you can use any of the options to customize your documents, add tables or content in here. You'll see we added some placeholders to pull the contact information. Uh, these are based on the user fields stored within their account. So to do that, what you'll do is you'll click on the merge option here, wherever you want to embed this information. And then um, select the type of information you want to upload into here. So let's say if they go into a specific events that you have, uh, you can insert this placeholder into your content. Next, uh, with the documents, you can have a request uh, signatures and different initials. So you'll see here we have these placeholders for where we want different signatures to happen. So how we do that, we select where in the document we want to add our signature and select on the signature option. Here we define what type of signature or initial we want to embed. And then we will insert this placeholder straight into our document. So now when you send the document to your contact, um, depending on who they are, if they're the sender or the recipient, they will then confirm their initials and signature and then go through the document and embed them into your document. So now that your document has been created, how you send this to your client is you go into their contact record. So if you go into a contact record, you go into their CRM activities tab here, you'll see all of their documents stored along the right side here. So you can either click into any of these documents here to see the document. You'll see our placeholders have populated. You can save the document, send it to them for review, or send it to them for signature. So uh, you'll need to send the document straight to the contact. Um, otherwise, you can also just trigger a workflow, which could send this document as well. So if you go into the workflow manager um, and you create a new workflow, what we'll do here is once this workflow is triggered throughout your entire account, if something happens, what you can do in the sending actions is you can actually send this contact a document. So you would select your specific documents, uh, who is the sender, what is the subject line, as well as any message you wanna to send to them. Once all parties have signed this document, you can also activate a workflow and this will then continue that onboarding or lead nurturing process that you're working on. So those are the two ways to send the documents. So now that the document has been sent or stored in the contact record, you can track it here within the documents area of the media library. So here you will have a list of all the contacts and you can access their CRM record from here. You'll see uh, the type of media file, what is the description of your document, and then where in the document stage they are. So updated just means that it's been set to the client's record. Um, then you can send it to them for review or signature, and then it tracks each of the points in the document signing um, flow. So next, let's dive into our public asset library. So before we do that, we need to go into the media library and make sure that we have the types of files uploaded into our account um, that we want to use in our media in our asset library. So these PDFs like we talked about need to be set to public so we have these public download links. So now that they're stored here, we'll go into our asset library and you'll see along the left here are all the available PDFs that we have stored um, that you can use in your asset library. So you can see the types of libraries you've created here. Otherwise, you can create a new asset library from the top button here. So we'll name this library our ebook collection. And this is we want to show on our website um, through an iframe. So now we have a new asset library name. We can select a default font, as well as different colors for the, for the dialogue, text, or link. Define the language preferences as well as if you want to allow a free email or even request their email from here as well. And then you can send them an email once they have clicked to download this if you'd like. Next, you can also send them to a custom thank you URL. So once they have downloaded your link, you can then direct them to a different site for more information. 
Then whoever downloads your link uh, or your file can also be added into a specific group within your account. If you want to delete this asset library from your account, just click on this red delete button right next to the update of your settings. Next here, you'll see that we have our white library space that has nothing in it just yet. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to drag any of your available files from the left and drag them straight into your new library that you are creating. You can also reorganize these by dragging and dropping them into place. Then what we want to do is we want to customize these to make it more visually appealing and kind of align with what you're trying to share. So to do this, you'll click on the pencil mark icon here to adjust the presets. Here you can set a preview for how many pages you want to show the contact before they download. So you'll see I have seven pages in this cheat sheet and I want to show them the first three. Once they download my cheat sheet, I want to activate a specific workflow for me to follow up with them. Then I can also select a background color as a thumbnail. So what we could do is select the color here and you'll see that my thumbnail here and you can also add text to um, your thumbnails. And then you can also add a subtitle here as well of kind of how you want to design this. What you could do as well, um, you could then also add um, an image as a background. So instead of having a color like we have here, so click on the drop down option and select an, a thumbnail that you've uploaded. You'll see that I've added text right into my thumbnail image, so I don't need to add more text on top of it. So then we'll go ahead and add descriptions for these options. So you'll see now that I've customized our PDF downloads that we have, we have thumbnails associated with each as well as a short description. We have a selected preview on how many pages we want to share before we ask the client to download it. Um, here you can also click on the preview option, which will then kind of show you a preview of the download option. And then as well, if you want to get the complete version, you can have your contact show the your name and their email as well to get full access and download the document. So that's how the document works. Uh, you can also click on the next icon here to go through your PDFs and make sure that um, it's working the way that you want to and you can download and print them from here. So once you've gone through your PDFs and you're happy with your asset library that you have, um, you can save all the changes here before you move on to make this now public on your site. You can also create different tabs. So let's say if you're offering different types of products, you can just create a new tab to show um, the different services that you offer or products that you're selling. So your public asset library becomes its own standalone page that you can have on your website. You'll see that you can embed this really quickly into any external site that you have by uh, using an iframe source code. So you would just copy paste this exact code right here. Uh, you can update the width and height of your, your public asset library. To show you what this looks like, let's just copy just the URL and then we can see how this is going to show on your site here. So using that URL, you'll see that we have our different services offered as well as um, our different eBooks that one can download. So if they click on that, they'll see the preview of your book as well as uh, get the complete version sent to them. So that's how you build out your public asset library within the account. So before we dive back into the presentation, I want to show you where you can track any of these links associated with your media library. So all links that you're sent within your account are stored within the automation link library area. So based on um, the links that you are sharing inside your emails, they're going to be stored here. So let's say we have a link that we're working on and we're sending out. Um, here you can click to see how many people have clicked on your link and you can associate the right amount of points to it. As well, you can also add an auto action. So what this does when someone clicks on our specific link, we track them, we give them a right amount of points, 
and then we can add them into a specific group in our account or we can remove them from a different group. And we can also activate a workflow which can do uh, move them throughout the account, send more emails, start them on journeys or drip campaigns or anything else depending on uh, what, they, what they did. So here you can save. So if anybody clicks on my specific link, I have automation added to further continue tracking those contacts and adding more nurturing steps after that. And then these points here are all calculated and stored within the lead scoring area. So everything in the account is connected and the more that you store within your media library, that's going to allow you to pull these resources up throughout your account. With your media library being the hub of all of your resources stored within the account, it's really good to stay organized and know exactly where the content is within your CRM. So a few ways to do this is to create different folders in your media library. And this can house different types of content being uploaded. Uh, if you're using different sales reps, you can have different folders per each shared access user to really help them manage their own content as well as the content that your marketing or sales team is bringing into the account. It's really good to have an ongoing review and to clean up any of all those older or duplicate files that were uploaded but were never really used. Um, the cleaner your file selection is, the easier it is to use the most up-to-date version uh, for your content. Next, we also suggest that you name your media file libraries in a specific order that makes sense to your campaign. So for example, if you're doing an email nurturing series, such as a drip campaign or using it in a journey, it's good to name and number these files. So for example, you can say one dot welcome email, two dot follow up, and then you can kind of move through. So what this does is when you are building out your nurturing campaign, you know exactly which email goes in which order. And then if you are using an image through multiple places within the account, but you want to update this, such as you know a logo, uh, what we suggest is you could rather, instead of adding the new image and going back and replacing them, um, go into that specific image and replace the image itself. So inside the media library, you can click to edit the image and then click to replace the file with a new one. And so what this does, it updates this image and file across the account wherever it was used, and it prevents um, you from kind of losing any images in your files and just kind of going back and updating those manually. So we covered a lot today. So just a quick recap on a few concepts that we covered. So the types of files that you can upload include images, files such as PDFs, documents, Excel, different types of documents and videos and articles and other uh, types of files. Then you can also customize these files. So you can customize the link associated. You can add a password protection you can customize the document download links as well as add hyperlinks behind your images and then you can manage the group visibility on where you want to share these files then you can add automation towards uh, the files in your account so you can activate workflows when your documents have been downloaded and then you can use that link library to track the file links and add automation or if you're using journeys, you can also segment them based on the types of files they've downloaded or links that they have clicked. And then it's important to keep everything organized. So use folders to house different types of content or users. Identify the different group-based access that you want to share. Then you can number and name your files, especially if you're using an email nurturing series update any older files, and then remove any duplicates that you're not using. Then we dived into documents. So we created a document. You add placeholders for your personalization, include initials and signatures for where you want your recipient to sign, and then you can track the progress within the media library documents area. And then for your public asset library, what you wanna do is define those library settings Add the PDF from your media library. You can add thumbnails and descriptions. Then you can request the emails of your contacts if you're using this for lead generation. And then you'll use that iframe source code to embed this into any external website. 
So if you need any help with your media library or have any questions uh, regarding your storage, please reach out to our support team at support at There's also additional resources in our help section or you can visit our blog for more of that detailed walkthrough. And that wraps up our webinar. Thank you for your time and have a great day.